Let's test something out really quick. On the count of three, I want you to close your eyes. All right, one, two, three. Close your eyes and now open them. Congratulations, your character just died in the blink of an eye in Shadowlands Season 3. What can you do? One thing you can do is watch this update. We will be breaking down some of the most broken abilities in 9.2, explaining how they work, and then giving you some tricks on how to counter them. So if you want to stay ahead of the meta this season, stay tuned, because this one's for you. Speaking of being ahead of the meta, Skillcapped has you covered. With the 250 plus rating guarantee, our website is designed to make you gain rating, which is why we offer you a full refund if you don't climb CR while actively using our website. We have over 700 site exclusive videos featuring class courses and arena commentaries designed by pro players. And if that wasn't enough, every website member can get on demand help with PvP questions, UI, macros, and more in the premium section of our Discord. So what are you waiting for? Get the rating you've always wanted at skillcap.com slash wow. The first set of abilities on our list are probably the most dangerous and you might not fully understand how they work. Obviously, Assassination Rogue Burst is pretty whack, but you need to know where it's coming from. The two main culprits are Vendetta and Sepsis, but if you are a regular viewer on this channel, you probably already know that. These abilities alone don't paint a complete picture of how their burst actually works since it gets modified by several other abilities and conduits. The first is Shiv. By default, it will increase all nature damage dealt to the target by 20%, but this gets increased even more by the well-placed steel conduit. Okay, that's it, right? Haha, <laughs> no. The damage of sepsis will get multiplied even more with septic shock, and you can already tell that we have a bit of a mathematical mess. Okay, we're finally done. Ugh, never mind. Ugh. If all that wasn't enough, the set bonuses for assassination rogues might be the best in the game for any DPS class, causing targets to take even more damage from poisons and bleeds with Shiv and Vendetta. Okay, that must be it, right? No, 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 you go away, we're not doing this again. All right, apparently rogues have two legendaries that make these interactions more frequent and more deadly. And when sepsis is removed, the assassination rogue will get adrenaline rush and shadow blades. So all hope is lost, right? Well, not so fast, because there are some really strong counters to most of this damage. If you're lucky enough to have a poison and bleed to spell like Stoneform, Craven Stratagem, or File of Serenity, then you're in luck since the majority of damage during the Vendetta and Sepsis combo is from poison and bleed dots. Aside from that though, there is a decent chance that someone on your team can remove poisons. On the healing side, Resto Druids, Mistweaver Monks, and Holy Paladins all have poison dispels. And for DPS, Ret Paladins, Windwalker Monks, Druids, and even Survival Hunters can remove poisons from their teammates. Even though the dispel will cause the Toxic Onslaught Legendary to proc, it is still worth it since the dot damage is the most threatening part of the sequence. But we know what some of you are saying, wait, what if we don't have any of that? Well, that means the best you can possibly do is trade a major cooldown the moment you see Vendetta, Sepsis, and Shiv all applied at the same time. Avoid trading unless you see two or three of these debuffs on yourself, as individually they're not too threatening. Next up, we have a spell combination that is absolutely brutal unless you know how to counter it. With the rise of Necrolord Frost Mages this season, you need to be aware of their two biggest offensive cooldowns, Deathborn and Icy Veins. Together, these will increase damage dramatically, but we have to dig below the surface to figure out why. For one, if the mage is playing Rune of Power, which they typically are, it will be automatically cast whenever Icy Veins is used. Once active, the duration of Veins can be extended with the Thermal Void talent, allowing Frost Mages to pump out some insane DPS during their cooldown window. And in case you didn't know by now, Icy Veins can no longer be dispelled. So if extending the duration of Veins wasn't enough, Deathborn is also extended by the Gift of the Lich Conduit, which means Frost Mages can deal some insane damage for nearly a minute straight. And if they're allowed to chain cast Frost Bolt, during that time, they will get even more damage ramp thanks to the Slick Ice Legendary. Okay, so with all this information combined, can you guess what the best counter is to this massive interaction? If you said interrupt the mage, you're right. The biggest reason for this is the Slick Ice Legendary. If you allow the mage to chain cast Frost Bolts, their damage will ramp way too high. One thing you need to be aware of though is that some mages will be playing with Echoing Resolve, which means you will need to check for interrupt immunity with your big debuffs before committing your interrupts. But with a combination of kicks and CC, the damage can be managed since the majority of it comes from Frost Bolt casts. 
Just like before, sometimes the best counter isn't always an option with how chaotic Arena can be. You might not be able to chain kicks and CCs reliably, so what should you do? Well, if that's the case, then LOS is probably your best option, especially considering the Frost Mage will likely be playing with a Destro Warlock, so you can pretty much kill two rocks with one bird by hugging a pillar. Moving on, we have some old tech that has become way more threatening in Season 3. By now, you might have noticed more Death Knights in Arena and might have been crushed by their Necrolord Covenant ability, Abomination Limb. This spell is pretty busted for two reasons. For one, it just deals a lot of damage by itself. This is primarily due to two modifiers, with the damage increase from Abomination's Frenzy combined with the Brutal Grasp Conduit. Together, these dramatically increase the damage done directly by Abomination Limb itself. But on top of this, the spell will continuously grip targets within 20 yards to the DK, meaning they can chain AoE damage with their partner, often a warrior or windwalker monk, for some unhealable and unavoidable spread pressure. The best counterplay to this interaction Action is to try and outrange the AoE grips in between their 4 second internal cooldown. Once you get gripped in, you have 4 seconds to get out of the 20 yard range before you can get pulled back again. This means abilities like Heroic Leap, Teleport, or Gateway can be really good counters for avoiding DK damage when Abomination Limb is active. Just keep in mind that you should also look out for Normal Death Grip, which has a pull range longer than the Covenant ability. Good DKs will save Death Grip, anticipating targets will kite their Abomination Limb, so even if you manage to get 20 yards away, that might not be safe. And speaking of needing to kite your opponents, we have a Fury Warrior specific ability you need to be aware of. Look, Fury Warriors have had a healing reduction effect for nearly a year at this point with the introduction of Slaughterhouse in 9.1. But skill capped, it's 9.2, why are you talking about this now? If we're being completely honest, it's because trying to encounter a Fury Warrior last patch was like searching for a shiny Pokemon. But in 9.2, Fury Warriors are significantly more popular, even seeing play in the AWC. Slaughterhouse is a fairly unique healing reduction effect, getting applied in stacks through a damaging ability called Rampage. Each stack is 5% healing reduction per hit of Rampage, and since Rampage hits 4 times, that means 20% reduced healing on the first press of Rampage, and 40% if applied twice in the same debuff window. Having 40% healing reduction for an extended period of time is absolutely devastating, and the majority of healers aren't really designed to outheal such a massive mortal strike effect. Just like before, counterplay varies according to what you have available to your team. Disarm effects can be especially good at preventing Fury Warriors from reapplying stacks, since most disarms are 6 seconds long, which perfectly matches the Slaughterhouse debuff. If disarms aren't an option, then any CC will do, making sure that it gets used on the Fury Warrior right before stacks are falling to prevent reapplication. And just like before, kiting away is honestly a pretty decent counterplay whenever possible, since the Warrior needs to build enough rage to use Rampage to keep stacks refreshed. The next ability on our list also has a stacking component, and if you don't know how it works, it could mean lights out. Boon of the Ascended is the Kyrian specific priest ability that you are likely to encounter this season in 2v2. It involves an initial cast to the spell itself, and when completed, it will activate Boon of the Ascended for 10 seconds, allowing the priest to chain an instant cast AoE ability called Ascended Nova and a targeted ability called Ascended Blast for its duration. Both of these abilities will generate Boon of the Ascended stacks. Once 10 seconds are over, the priest will explode with an ability called Ascended Eruption, which deals AoE damage that scales depending on how many stacks of Boon of the Ascended were generated. And just like some of the other abilities on this list, this damage is amplified even more with a Conduit and Soulbind ability that also deals AoE damage. Okay, so all of this might have been a bit confusing, but the counterplay is pretty straightforward. For one, you should recognize that Boon of the Ascended is on the Arcane Spell School, meaning that interrupting it only delays the burst sequence while still allowing the priest to access the rest of their spellbook. Because of this, the best option is to simply CC the priest the moment the Boon cast finishes. This will prevent them from generating stacks with its two core abilities, and in many cases will force them to Rage Trinket instead. If that's the case, the next best option is to try an LOS for the rest of the 10 second duration, again with the goal of preventing the priest from generating stacks. This is crucial since its cooldown can be reduced dramatically with the Sphere's Harmony Legendary comboed with the Effusive Anima Accelerator Soulbind ability, especially when Boon is allowed to cleave pets, like it often does against Demo Warlocks. As a side note, Effusive Anima Accelerator is a dot that cannot be dispelled, but it can be removed with things like Craven Stratagem, or Cloak of Shadows, or even be avoided preemptively with mechanics like Greater Fade to prevent it from being applied when the boon cast finishes. All of this leads us to our last point, don't stack on your teammates since the majority of this spell's interactions benefit from hitting multiple targets. And that brings us to our last ability in this roundup, which again belongs to the Kyrian Covenant. 
Just like Boon of the Ascended, you are likely to experience this in 2v2, where shamans are more likely playing Kyrian compared to 3v3. Vesper Totem is their active covenant ability, which deals AoE damage to targets within 8 yards. Just like before, its damage can be modified through a conduit and legendary, which together can make it incredibly deadly, especially considering the totem can be relocated once it has been used. Fortunately, the counterplay for this totem is relatively straightforward. Kill it as soon as possible. This should be fairly obvious, but this is the most efficient way to stop its damage without needing to trade major defensive cooldowns. And this is especially important in 9.2, as you might encounter more elemental shamans this season who might be playing this in 2v2 or even 3v3. With the rest of their toolkit being so bursty, you need to make sure you have defensive stops available from some of their other core abilities like Stormkeeper and Echoing Shock. In any case, we want to hear from you. What other abilities do you think are absolutely broken in 9.2? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're doing that, we want to remind you that Skillcap.com offers a 250 plus rating gain guarantee while actively using our website. That's right, for just $4.99 a month, you can gain access to premium quality instructional content for every class. This includes courses and commentaries that feature some of the best WoW players of all time. Joining today will also give you access to the premium section of our Discord server, where our expert team of specialists can help you with any PvP related question, even macro and UI support. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users in your next PvP journey. Check out skillcap.com slash WoW today. All right, guys, that wraps up today's guide. We hope you learned something useful for Season 3, and we wish you the best of luck in your weekly vaults. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.